Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna to be running you through my top 11 Lightroom Classic hacks and tools that I use on a daily basis to speed up my editing workflow and to overall just make my editing better. Without further ado, let's jump into the video and get started. Okay, so let's first talk about masking. Let's say, for example, we're in Lightroom here and we wanna just select the sky around the balloon. And for some reason, for whatever reason, the sky selecting auto mask tool is not working. Well, we're gonna to have to default to the brush, but how on earth are we gonna stay inside the lines? If you come down here, there's a little button that just says auto mask, and it just uses contrast to simply detect whether you're in or out of the lines. And this actually works pretty well. So for example, let's just say we're gonna turn the feather down a little bit. We've got auto mask selected, and now we're just gonna go around the balloon and it's gonna stop me, as you can see there, we're in the sky, but it's gonna stop me from going into the sky, making my life a whole lot easier. Okay, next up, and something that I change all the time is my crop overlay. If we head into the crop tool over here, you can see I've got the basic three by three grid. But if you press O, you can actually cycle through a handful of other crop overlays to help you better your composition and just have a better overall crop. So as you can see here, just scrolling through, we've got a wide range of different ones that we can select from, and this will improve your composition overall, and it will help you, I guess, become a bit of a better editor. Okay, this next one is a very quick one. It's just simple before and afters. Instead of using this YY to compare before and after, which in all honesty, I absolutely hate, you can simply just come back to the big photo here and press backslash. And this way you can easily track, you can just quickly scroll between before, after, before, after, and you can easily just track your progress through editing. This is the way I do it all the time. I never use this compare tool whatsoever. Okay, so presets are pretty crucial for a fast and efficient workflow on Lightroom. And these are something I use all the time. I have my master collection over here, which arguably are the presets I use nine times out of 10. I might play around with my colorways, but nine times out of 10, I'm using my master collection. So for example here, I've got portraits two selected and I've got it at 100% intensity. Now this is somewhat of a new feature on Lightroom and I did make a full video about this, but this is still amazing. What you can do is you can dial back the intensity so we can put less of the preset on or if we wanted to we can put more of the preset on. To be honest with you I actually like more of the preset here. Maybe let's leave this around 150. This looks great and this is something that I use all the time. It's going to speed up your workflow like crazy. Okay and talking about speeding up your workflow this is going to be the biggest tip you'll be able to take from this video if you're looking to speed up your workflow and that is when you get back from a shoot and you've got a stack of photos shot with the same settings, the same lighting conditions and the same subjects you just wanna be able to copy and paste the settings from one image, you just wanna edit one image, and then all you've gotta do is copy and paste those settings onto the other 100 photos you've got. Well, you can do this and it's super simple. This obviously isn't the case in my Lightroom right now, but let's say I wanted to take this, but let's say I wanted to take the settings from this photo here and copy it onto this photo here. All I would have to do is make sure this is the main photo selected. I then hit shift and move back with the arrow and hit the left side, or I can hit shift and then click so all of them would get the settings. But let's just say, for example, we want these settings on this photo. Then you hit command shift S and now you can synchronize settings. You can choose what you want and what you don't want and you've just duplicated your edit on however many photos you selected, saving yourself a lot of time. So following that, another one of my favorite tools inside of Lightroom is the automatic white balance dropper. If you come over here, you can see here we have this weird dropper button. Now this is in the white balance tab and what you can do is if your image, you've shot it a little bit too warm, a little bit too cool, or whatever the case, you just use the wrong white balance, you can correct it with this dropper. So pick this dropper up and then what you wanna do is click on something that should be pure white or pure gray, either one works, and then you just wanna simply click on the image. So for example, let's say we wanted to click here it is gonna just slightly alter our white balance. Now this was already shot with a very accurate white balance, so we're not gonna see much of a change here, but this is super handy, it's super accurate, and I promise you it's gonna speed up your editing. Okay, so let's say you're editing this photo and you're down in the HSL tab here, and you don't know what color the sky is. Now, from my eyes, I can probably tell this is a bit of a yellow and orange mix, but let's say you couldn't. All you have to do is come over to this little drag and drop a button here. You wanna click on it, and then all you have to do is click on the part of the image that you wanna change, the color that you wanna change, click, hold, and then you can drag down, or you can drag up depending on what way you wanna go. This is another tiny little tool that Lightroom just nails. They have just perfected Lightroom, and to be honest, this is another thing that I use all the time. Okay, so let's say you were shooting with a bit of an amateur photographer, and you've got home, your shots are looking all crooked, and you need to straighten them quickly. What you can do is head over to the crop tool, hit this little ruler here, and then you need to draw on something that should be straight. So horizons are perfect for this, but for this example, I'm gonna draw from the top of this building behind Olka here, and I'm just gonna drop, 
and we've pretty much got our straight image. This is perfect, like I said, it works a little bit better with horizons and other buildings that you can see clear lines on, but this is a super quick way to straighten your photos. If you've just got back from a shoot, you've imported your photos, and you realize that the mountains or the buildings in your images weren't looking as big as you thought they did in your camera, here's how to make them just a little bit bigger inside of Lightroom. Now, of course, you do wanna keep in mind that you probably don't wanna be doing this when people are in your shots, so this might not be the perfect example, but you'll get the idea. You wanna come into the Transform tab down here, you wanna to come to Aspect, and then you just wanna drag it up and it's gonna squeeze everything in your image. If you wanna make things a little bit flatter, you can do so. But as you can see in this image here, I'm either looking short and pudgy or really tall and really lanky. So when people are in the shot, I like to leave this as is, but this is something you can do with a lot of landscape images. Okay, so next up, we're gonna cover the new masking feature. This is amazing for portrait shooters or group photo shooters, if that's even a thing. But all you have to do is come over to the masking tab here, and then as you can see, Lightroom is just starting to detect people. Lightroom's gonna detect Amanda in here, and I can click on Amanda, this little person one, and then I can choose to mask out the face skin, the body skin, the eyebrows, the lips, and the hair. Now Lightroom will change this depending on what it can and can't see. If it can't see the hair, the hair won't be an option. If it can't see the body skin for some reason, body skin won't be an option. You get the idea, but all you have to do then is click on hair, create a mask, and now you've got a mask. How amazing is that? Lightroom, I'm telling you, you guys are getting too good. Okay, and last but not least, since I shoot at golden hour nearly all the time, I get a lot of nice gradients in my sky. But with this comes some weird image banding. If you've ever exported a photo and you've got some weird color bands in your image, this is how to fix it super quickly. All you have to do is open up your image, scroll down to effects, all the way down the bottom here, and just add a little bit of grain. But I would say between 15 to 20 grain is more than enough. This is just a little bit too much. There we go. And I promise you, after you export it, nine times out of 10, this is gonna remove the banding and you'll be good to go. All right, guys, so that is gonna wrap up today's video. There are 11 of my top Lightroom hacks and tools that I use all the time in my Lightroom editing workflow. I hope you've been able to learn something from this video today. And if you have, let me know what it was down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed today's video and you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. And guys, as always, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.